Okay. Um, all right. Um, today's date is June 19, 2022. We have a simulation with um, Professor Mohammed Dajani Dowdy. Um, I hope he's on this Zoom um, already. Um, for those of you who speak English, please go to the interpretation icon and choose English. For those who speak Arabic, um, Tahsin, could you make the announcement for Arabic? Okay, so it's, first of all, I wanna acknowledge that uh, Dan has been helping tremendously in this uh, Zoom simulations now for almost two years, helped me set up this uh, the Zoom simulation. And uh, with his mother, Ruth, uh, that is a lawyer, uh, he is a computer engineer, perfect, uh, 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 a perfect situation for a to set up the zoom about a common government and i'm really i i, I don't think i acknowledge dan at all during the simulation but i want to make sure to acknowledge him right now and uh, oh, thank you joseph i appreciate it yeah to so thank you so much for being such a loyal supporter um uh, thank you so much You're welcome. Uh, okay so um Today, like I said, is June 19, 2022. Um, we have a simulation with uh, Professor Mohammed Dajani Dowdy uh, for an Israeli Palestinian Confederation. It's an Israeli Palestinian Confederation simulation. What we are simulating is the essence of how a common government for the people of Israel and Palestine in the area of Israel, the West Bank, Gaza and Jerusalem, and Jerusalem, 14 million people could make peace. A government that would be secular, that would be democratic with three branches of government, the um, executive, which is the president, the legislative, which is a parliament, and the judicial, which are judges. What we are saying that it is possible, likely, and the most successful scenario for the people of Israel and Palestine to make peace if they have a common secular democracy that transcend religion. But we are not saying that the Israeli government or the Palestinian government should be dismantled. In fact, we are saying we could cooperate with those governments, but work independently of those governments, separately from those governments, and have our own vision, our own uh, outlook at the entire area with the, with the intent and the ability to make peace because it would be a government that is legitimized by the people of Israel and Palestine together, regardless of religion, or national identity. This is the essence of what we are uh, uh, simulating today. We are showing how it could be done. Um, we have a website that explains how the government could work. It has a constitution. If you read the constitution, it tells you exactly how the government will be created, how it would function, with three branches of government, how it, what's the relationship between the confederation government or the common government that I like? I like the, the term common government better than a confederation government because uh, some people get the misunderstanding that a confederation government means a government that would be created by the Israeli government and the Palestinian government. And we are saying, no, it would be created by the people themselves. It would, the people in Israel, the West Bank, Gaza, and Jerusalem. It would not be created by the Israeli government or the Palestinian government. It would be an, a separate entity, independent of the Israeli or the Palestinian government for the sole purpose of getting, of making peace. Someone is calling me, even though I put do not disturb. So I'm sorry for the interruption. 
Um, so the Constitution talks about creating, um, oh, I see, is that uh, Professor Dajani joined us? I hope so, or oh, he's joining us. Okay, so if you read the Constitution, it spells out how, how this government will be created, what would be the function of this government, the three branches of government, what would be the relationship between the Israeli and the Palestinian government and the common government. And I think it's a very interesting read. And um, I, if you want to comment about it or comment about everything else, send me an email to josephavisar at gmail.com and um, I'll be happy to clarify or deal with the issues that you think are an obstacle. It's fine. Send me an email. I'll, I'll, you know, it's a new concept. I understand it's hard for people to accept it or understand it or conceptualize it. Send me an email and talk to me. Uh, my email is josephavisar at gmail.com. Uh, do we have uh, Professor Dajani already in the Zoom? Could someone tell me? Because I don't see the audience. I only see it my... It looks like someone's trying to join. Might not have the password. Okay. Um, okay, the password is 881124. Right. But I don't know if Mohammed has it. Yeah. Okay, well... He shouldn't need a password if I sent I sent him so we pre practice. Okay. Uh, is he is he on? Is he well it, that says Mohammed is joining, but okay. that's it. Okay. He hasn't joined. Oh. Okay, I see. Did he join? No, he wasn't able to because he may not have had the password. Okay, let me check my email on my phone to see if he's sending me an email. Yeah, I have an email from him. Can you send me a link, please? Okay. I just sent him a link. Hello? Uh, oh, yeah, Joseph, it's Carl Goldberg. Uh, please can cancel my previous call. I found your uh, uh, password. Okay, all right, sure. So everything's okay, I'm, I'm on now. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, but let me see if I can send. Um, okay, let me see how I can. I got an email from Professor Dajani to send him an email. Okay, so hold on a second, I apologize. Uh, let me see if I can. I'll stop sharing and uh, let me see. Okay, participant. Uh, invite. Okay, email. All right, so I apologize to you all. Um, oh, I. Uh, Okay. Uh, Dan, can you send him an invite? I'm having trouble with my email on my computer. Dan? Yeah. Um, what's his email address? Let me see. Uh, just go to Johnny, uh, Muhammad Dajani. I'll get it. One sec. Never mind. Hello? Yeah, we are. Okay, let me see if I have a link here. I'm in Jerusalem. Do you want me to call in by phone? Um, well, he need a link. 
It's not that he's not aware, he needs a link and we are sending him a link. You need the link plus the password, passcode. That's 881124. Dan, did you send it to him? I was looking for his email address. Okay, let me see if I can find his email address. Okay. I apologize to all of you. It's um, it's M S D A J A N I D A O U D I at gmail dot com. Can you put it in the uh, chat window and I'll just copy and paste it? I'm trying to copy it and it doesn't let me copy it. So, but I, I uh, hold on a second, please. Oh, wait, here he is. He's, he's joining again. See if he can join. Oh, I think he joined. Yeah, he's here. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, are you recording? Is he here? Hello? Yes, he's here. Okay, good. All right, so... Are we recording? Yes, we're recording. Oh, okay, all right. So we are back. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Dejani, for joining. Um, Sorry for, for being late. I had uh, internet problems. Okay, no problem. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, 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 thank you so much for joining. Um, so, like I said, we are. This is a simulation about how a common government for the people of Israel and Palestine could make peace. This is not a lecture; it's a simulation. We are demonstrating how a common government could make peace. When we say common government, we mean a separate government from the people, the government of Israel, or the Palestinian government a government for the entire area of Israel, the West Bank, Gaza, and Jerusalem, a secular government, a democracy with three branches of government. And we're having Professor Muhammad S. Dajani Daoudi as the guest speaker today. Professor Muhammad S. Dajani Daoudi is a Jerusalem-born political science professor and a peace activist 
with a doctorate degree from the University of South Carolina and an additional doctorate degree from the University of Texas. He established the Islamic movement Wasatya, promoting reconciliation, moderation. I'm sorry, did I mispronounce this? Yes, Wasatya. Wasatya, I am sorry. So let me repeat that. He established the Islamic movement Wasatya, promoting reconciliation, moderation, tolerance, and peaceful coexistence. Professor Dajani led Palestinian students to Auschwitz and Krakow as part of his teaching about the Holocaust. This trip, the, the trip itself cost him his job at Al-Quds University and compromised his safety. He received death threats and his car was torched. Tufts University honored him with a Dr. Gene Meyer Global Citizenship Award in recognition of his ongoing work to encourage dialogue and find alternative to extremism. So that it, we invite people with all points of views, regardless of the points of views, whether they are pro-peace or not pro-peace, pro-Israeli or pro-Palestinian, we try to get as many people to participate with different points of view to discuss our formula for peace, which is a common government. The next speaker on July uh, 10, 2022 would be Richard Boy Boyd Barrett. Uh, Mr. Barrett is, a, is currently an Irish politician in the Irish parliament. He, his government, his party is called People Before Profit Solidarity. And we will ask him about Ireland and we'll ask him about our formula and we'll see if there are any similarities. The next speaker after that would be Robert Naiman. He is the president of Truthout and former policy director of Just Foreign Policy. And he lived in Palestine twice. Um, and then we'll have uh, Professor Paul Sham, who is a research professor of Israel studies in the University of Maryland. He wrote an article on August 7. Uh, I'm sorry, he will be with us on August 7. And he wrote the article on May 26 in Haaretz, in which he said the only old slash new comprehensive idea to arise in the last few years is a confederation, sort of a two-state solution. He did not discuss our concept of a confederation. He mostly discussed the concept of Yossi Bailey and the uh, concept of land for all, but I invited him to learn about our concept and he graciously agreed. I hope that he knows about our concept uh, by now. We will have on August uh, 21st, we will have Professor Frankie Wilmer. She's a, she used to be a Montana state legislator for eight years and she is teaching at Montana State University. I believe she's also a guest today. I mean, she's, a, she's watching us today, the simulation. Um, we will have on September 11, we will have Professor Menachem Klein from the Bar from Bar Ilan University, Israel. He's a professor of Middle East and Islamic studies. He already told me that he supports two states and he was not aware of our concept. And I told him, well, our concept does not preclude two states. So he was interested and he's coming in. On October 2nd, we will have a uh, Haaretz journalist, Gidon Levy, in a conversation. Gidon Levy was in a simulation. He participated in a simulation. And um, after the simulation, he had time to think about it. He was supportive at that time. Hopefully, he'll be more supportive on October 2nd. Um, the simulation timeline, we estimated it to be about 120 minutes. 
we will have several segments, uh, constitution, legislation. In other words, we are trying to show how the common government could work, how it could function. And we are pretending that we are the common government. That's what this simulation is about. And we will have Professor Dejani comment about, about what we are doing. And then we'll have audience uh, question and answer with the speaker and closing remarks by me at the end. Uh, let me show you a short video that explained the, uh, our concept of a common government. The conflict between Israelis and Palestinians has endured for generations. And instead of time healing the wounds, it's only caused the anger to fester and the violence to grow. But what if there was a way to alleviate the tension? Something that may not outright solve every problem, but at least create a forum that encourages a peaceful compromise. Welcome to the Israeli-Palestinian Confederation, a common third government between the Israeli and Palestinian citizens, specifically designed to foster peace, tolerance, and economic prosperity between the two nations. Here's how it works. First off, both Israel and Palestine will keep their respective governments. Israelis Knesset and the Palestinian National Authority will remain unchanged. The Israeli-Palestinian Confederation, IPC, will be a third entity acting as a unifying agent between the two. The IPC will comprise 300 parliament members elected from 300 districts in Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza. Above them will preside a president and vice president, one Israeli and one Palestinian. In order for the IPC to pass a law, it will require a 55% majority from its Israeli representatives, as well as a 55% majority from its Palestinian representatives, thereby preventing either side from monopolizing the legislature. Of course, the IPC won't undermine the political power of either the Israeli or the Palestinian government. At any time, Israel or Palestine may veto a law passed by the IPC. If neither side vetoes, the law is passed and the two nations are another step closer to resolution. Please help us make this a reality. The Israeli-Palestinian Confederation. We might speak different languages, but we all mean the same thing. So we would like to conduct a pre-simulation survey to ask you before the simulation, do you support <laughs> Um, a common government for the people of Israel and Palestine, the West Bank and Gaza that will coexist with Israelis and, and the Palestinian governments. At the end of the simulation, we will conduct this again and see if there is a movement in your, in your opinion regarding this concept. So right now, if you will, we'll show you the um, survey and ask you uh, your opinion. Do you support a common government for the people of Israel and Palestine? Let's see how, how many do. So I'll give you a few seconds to vote. Do you support a common government for the people of Israel and Palestine to make peace? Okay. Um, all right. Can you publish the, the results? Okay, so right now, 86% of the audience said yes, and 14% said no. I know that a lot of the people in the audience already went through the simulation, so that's probably why we have such a high number of, eight of yes, but hopefully we can get the, uh, the number even higher at the end of the simulation. So, um, The purpose of the simulation is to demonstrate how a common government could make peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians, but not only Israelis and Palestinians, also between Israel and the Palestinians and the entire neighborhood. Because we believe that if there is peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians, the whole neighborhood will be in peace because it's all related to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. We are not having a historical review today of who is to blame. So that it's clear, we are not precluding that the common government, in fact, I, I think that they will actually review 
and have an argument about who is to blame. But at this time in the simulation, we are not doing this. We only, we have limited time and we are only discussing the formula that is being presented to you in this simulation. We are not anti-Israel or we are not anti-Palestinian. We are pro-peace. We are entitled to have our own, uh, our own perspective on the conflict. In other words, because we are a, a organization for both the Israelis and the Palestinians, and we anticipate that the government that will be created will be for both the people of Israel and Palestine, it will have its own perspective. It's not going to have the Israeli perspective or the Palestinian perspective. It's going to have its own global perspective, which is the entire 14 million people. So keep that in mind when we do the simulation. And like I said, we do not preclude other formulas for peace. Uh, and we, in fact, I am, I am contacting other organizations and asking them to present to us their formula for peace. I haven't really gotten a response from Yossi Bailin um, yet. Uh, hopefully he will respond and uh, we'll have a session with him and uh, his uh, Palestinian uh, partner that, that to, to talk about their formula for, for a confederation. And I'm also contacting Land for All and uh, to talk about their uh, perspective of a, uh, of a uh, formula for peace. Um, we will ask Professor Dajani to judge this, our, our perspective, our formula based on three criteria. Could the IPC formula attain peace? Could it make peace? Is it implementable? And is there a downside to either the Israelis or the Palestinians? Um, I believe my perspective is the, first, the, the answer to the first question is yes. The second question is yes. And the third question is no. And we had other speakers who said that also, that yes, yes, and no is the answer to those questions. But we'll ask Professor um, Dejani to give us his opinion as well. Um, so that it's clear, we are not the government. We are only proposing how the common government could, could act. We are not saying those are the legislation that they should pass, but we are, we are saying that's a possibility. And we, we have a lot more legislation that we can show you, but because of the limited time, we're only showing very few legislation. I had a meeting with Professor Dejani last week and he chose certain legislation and that's what we are going to show. Um, because it's a simulation, it's not a lecture. We are asking you to refrain from comments. You can use the chat and the chat goes to everyone. People read it, but we are asking you to refrain from comments during the simulation, but we are encouraging questions. What's the difference between a question and a, and a comment? If I show you an airplane and you say, Joseph, how does this thing fly? That's a question. But if you say, I never board an airplane because they cause pollution and they're dangerous, that's a comment. So keep your uh, comments to the end or on chat, but you are welcome and encouraged to ask questions. I, I want to emphasize, you are encouraged to ask questions about what's being presented to you. Um, these are facts. The Israeli prime minister represents Israelis only. The Palestinian leaders represent Palestinian only. In the simulation, we are asking you to make certain assumptions. And these are the assumptions that we held an online election that we had an online election platform over the internet for the last three months. In other words, that the people in Israel and Palestine, the West Bank, Gaza and Jerusalem were able to vote. 14 million people were able to vote in the last three months, not one day, not one week, but three months of voting over the internet, uh, using their phone, using their uh, computers and home and the library or wherever, or friends' computers or whatever to vote. So I want you to assume that we just concluded three months of election. 
In other words, on June 19, 2022, we concluded three months of an election that 5 million people in the three months voted. 3 million Palestinian voted and 2 million Israeli voted. That's, I want you to assume, that's not, that's not happened. That's part of the assumption for the simulation. I also want you to assume that the president, that I, Joseph, was elected president by one and a half million votes. So that it is clear, I do not intend to run for president. This is just for the assumption. In fact, I'm not even qualified based on the, um, on the uh, constitution to run for election, but we are assuming that I, was, that I ran for election and a Palestinian lady received 1.3 million votes and we will rotate. I will become vice president in two years. She will become president in two years. I also want you to assume that 300 parliament members were elected. And I'll ask most of you to act as parliament members. Okay, each parliament member represent 47,000 people in their district. So if we divide 14 million by 300, we will get 47 for each district. And you will be asked to be parliament member, either Israeli or Palestinian. Okay, so, does anyone have any questions regarding those assumptions at this time? Just shout it out and if you have any questions. Professor Dajani, do you have any questions regarding those assumptions? No, uh, it's not a question, it is a comment. The comment is that there are assumptions and not reality. And that's the problem with them, because you assume things that might have, that could happen or could never happen. You assume so many Palestinian voted when there could have been no Palestinian have voted at all. Or so it is all assumptions. And the problem with assumptions is that they might be far from the reality. And so, how do you make the assumption a reality? Right, That's but, but we are, this is a different question. The question is- It is a question yeah. because okay. We, okay. Didn't, we, we, we didn't decide, we didn't, you didn't define the type of question. So you said okay. that question, so, okay. but this so, is my question. My question is how we do not end to be like in Plato's cave, looking at perceptions instead of reality. We want reality. So how do we move from perception to reality, from assumption to reality? Okay, these are, the, how do you change from assumption to reality is a different question. That's a okay. completely different question. Okay. What's wrong the, with it? Okay, being, the, uh, yeah. the, but the the question, the assumption itself, are, is are you willing to go along with that assumption? We are we are now uh, doing role playing. We are playing a game, okay? And I'm asking you: Are you willing to play that game? Are you willing to play a game in which we are assuming that? We had an election. We are assuming that 5 million people voted. We are assuming that uh, 300 parliament members were uh, uh, elected and that uh, uh, a president and a vice president were elected. I, it's a legitimate question to ask, how do you get to that? But, but right now we are just assuming that it happened. We're not, we are not asking you to give a, a, an opinion how to get there or to question how to get there. We're just saying, are you willing to play that game as we are playing it right now? Or do you have a question about that? What is my role in this game? Well, uh, you're, you can have two roles, okay? The first role is you can act as either Israeli prime minister, or Palestinian Authority leader, or Hamas leader, or 
a parliament member, either Israeli or Palestinian. You can choose one of those roles. And the second role is to comment about what we are doing as part of the game. So you can be both the person uh, acting in the game and also um, uh, commenting on the game. And, and you are invited to comment, but I'm also asking you, it would be nice if you also take a role in the game. Are you willing to do that? The problem is you are asking me to do something I do not believe in. Um, I'm not an actor. I uh, don't believe because an actor is someone who plays something that is not real. Uh, it could not be related to the work he's doing, and it could be re not related to his philosophy or to his ideas. Yet he plays a game and he acts and the film is over and people watch it for entertainment. But okay. here, we are not doing that. Here we are talking about the possibilities for a real reality and to, to reach a reality. So okay, here, yeah, yeah. Danny, also, you assume that I would answer two yes and one no, while my answers would have been two no's and one yes. So the problem is, how do I fit into this? And I asked this before, even and when we talked about it, because I don't want the impression, I don't want to give the impression that I agree with the Confederacy that I do not believe it is realistic and in right. the sense. So, yeah. so even so when I, you I, say, yeah, for instance, if you are talking about Fatah and Hamas, I neither believe in Fatah nor in Hamas. And so I don't believe they represent any, any a legitimate entity. And so they, how can they be part of a confederacy? Okay. What I want, what I believe in, is that there should be a recognition Professor, of uh, Professor Dajani, at this time, we are not really asking you to present your beliefs. Okay. okay. What do we you want are to asking you, okay. to, are you willing to, to go along with the, with the assumptions that we created? You can say, no, I'm not willing to go along with that, which is fine. Okay. I'm not, and for a reason, I want to explain. I'm not, I, and I don't go along with that because I don't believe they are realistic. And so that's why I, I'm taking that position. Okay, let me ask you this. When you watch a movie that is, that it does not reflect your life, okay? Are you able to accept what's going on on the screen knowing that it does not reflect your life, that it's not real in your life? Are you able to do that? No, because I think that it's a movie. It's not okay. a reality. All right, okay, all right. So um, does anyone have any questions regarding the assumptions other than uh, Professor Dejani? Does anyone in the audience have any question regarding those assumptions? All right. Um, I believe that those assumptions are realistic because it only requires the um, implementation of an election, but we'll get to that later. Um, so at this time, I'm going to be asking the audience, first of all, we need leaders. We need, we need a, a, a PA president, Palestinian Authority president. Do I have a, a volunteer to act as Palestinian Authority president? Does anyone volunteer to be the, okay, I see Shafir, Shahi, Shahira Hafez. Okay, is that right? Raise her hand, okay. Do I have, a volunteer for Hamas leader. Do 
do we have, does someone volunteer to be, I see two raised hands, but I cannot see who you are. So can you just speak out? The second person that raised his hand. Rafael Castro is one. Yes. Oh. Oh. Who, who is the other? Okay, Rafael Castro will be the Hamas leader. Yes. Okay, thank you. I see Rafael Castro is Hamas leader. You are, and then we need a Israeli prime minister. Do we have a Israeli prime minister? Yeah, Len. Okay. You've been serving as Israeli prime minister for many, many years now, but you're, you're a good prime minister in the sense that you reflect a hardline Israeli, but uh, it's okay. All right, the rest of you, I'm gonna be asking you to be either Palestinian or Israeli uh, parliament members. And you need to decide now, are you Israeli or are you Palestinian? Your district could be exclusively Israeli or exclusively Palestinian or both. In other words, a mixed district, okay? In other words, you can be in Jerusalem, it would be a mixed district. You could be even in Ramallah, a mixed district, because part of Ramallah could be uh, in, in an Israeli district. You could be in Gaza. So I'm asking you to choose now, are you Israeli or Palestinian? Is your district exclusive of your nationality or is it mixed? And I'm asking for your intellectual honesty to remain in that this in a representative of that district. And your responsibility is to reflect your district, to reflect the need for your district. You are elected to represent your district and to do the best for your district. You are not elected to represent the Israeli or the Palestinian government. You're only representing your district. So let's have uh, the Palestinian parliament member, uh, not members, please uh, just say yes, because we just wanna see how many Palestinian parliament members do we have? Okay. Okay. And so that it is clear, the Hamas leader, the PA leader, and the Israeli prime minister, you are not part of our government. You are an outside government. You are not Hamas, a, a Palestinian leader or Israeli leader. You are uh, you are not a parliament member. You are representing your government. That means that you cannot vote in our election. You can only have a veto power, okay? So we have, please publish, the, we have 12 Palestinian parliament members. And let's have now the Israeli parliament members, please vote. Okay, um, we need more Israeli parliament members. Do we have any more Israeli? Okay, uh, we have three Israeli parliament members at this time. Uh, maybe some more will join, but don't switch parliament. You're either Israeli or Palestinian. And, and as leaders of Israel, the Palestinian and the Hamas, you are not allowed to vote because you're a different uh, a government, okay? All right. We are, the first order of business we have is a constitution. Um, Libby, um, could you please read the, the first page of the constitution? Sure. We believe that Palestinians and Israelis are entitled to equal rights under the law and guaranteed human rights and freedom. The Israeli-Palestinian Confederation Hi. 
does not intend to supersede or supplant the Palestinian or Israeli governments, nor to abrogate or undermine any agreements between those governments. We recognize the need to work with the Israeli and Palestinian governments. Our purpose is to resolve conflicts and to expand the relationship between Palestinians and Israelis in a fair and equitable manner. We believe in equal rights under the law, guaranteed human rights and freedom for all. All right, so what this says is that we are a separate government. We are not here to undermine the Israeli or the Palestinian government and not to undermine or supersede or supplant any agreements between them. In other words, they can agree to whatever they want. We are constitutionally cannot um, undermine any agreement between them. They can agree to two states. They can agree to one state. They can have any agreements constitutionally. We are not able to, we are not able to undermine those or, or uh, we have, we accept all those agreements between them. So if you say you are in favor of them agreeing to two states or one state, Constitutionally, we are obliged to accept those agreements between them. Um, please read the second page. We voluntarily give the legislatures and the governments of Israel and Palestine veto power over legislation we pass relating to the domain of control of those governments. We believe in the separation of power between the legislative, executive, and judicial branches. We believe in the creation of a permanent secular government for all the people residing in Israel and Palestine. We believe in having a separate judicial branch relating to IPC legislation with Israeli and Palestinian judges with a system to avoid biased decisions based on nationality. Okay. So we are a separate government. We're going to pass legislation, but we agree that if the legislation affects the uh, sovereignty of either the Israeli or the Palestinian governments, we give them a veto power. That's part of, of, of our constitution. We agree to give them a veto power. So does anyone have any questions regarding the constitution? Professor Dajani, do you have any questions regarding the constitution? No. If you, give, if you give the Israeli government and the Palestinian government the, the veto, the right to veto, so what, what guarantees do you have for them not vetoing all the other, all the other three uh, points in the constitution? And so annulling the constitution, because you, if you want to give them and we agree that the Israeli and Palestinian government might not be tending towards peace. So any move that you would think to take towards peace, they might uh, veto. Or here, yani, they might not agree with the three other points, which you believe are very important and very essential, yet you are giving them the right to veto. So I would disagree with the first point and agree with the next three points. Okay, I, uh, Professor, um, it's not, okay. I, I'm, I'm, not really, I'm not point? asking, I'm not asking if you agree or not. Okay. Because what we is, are a separate, it, we are a separate government. Okay. We are entitled to pass our own constitution. And we do not give a veto power to the Israeli or the Palestinian government over the constitution itself, because that does not affect their domain of control. In other words, we can pass the legislation without, even if they object, it doesn't affect their domain and control. We are a government of the 14 million people and we pass a constitution and regardless of the Israeli or the Palestinian government, whether they oppose it or not, they don't have a veto power over that. 
Do you, are there any other questions? No, I think that's that's fine. A, any other question by the participants? The people that are participating in this simulation. Do you have any question regarding the Constitution? Okay. Hearing no question, let's have a vote. Uh, Palestinian parliament members, please vote. Do you support the constitution of the... Okay. Um, let's... Um, uh, uh, let's publish the, uh, 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 I believe one person voted no, one Palestinian and nine, eight voted yes. So the person who voted no, he would be expelled from the parliament because he is required to um, pledge uh, to accept the constitution. Um, just like any other democracy in the world, uh, parliament members are required to accept the constitution. So the person who voted no will be expelled and the person who got the second number of votes from his district, he or she will become uh, parliament members. Uh, let's have the Israeli parliament members vote. Israeli parliament members. Do you support the Israeli-Palestinian Confederation Constitution? Okay, we have, okay. Uh, I, apparently we have four we used to have. Okay, so let's uh, actually five, uh, stop sharing. I'm sorry, yes, sharing. So the same thing, one Israeli parliament member voted no, he does not accept. He or she will be expelled from the constitution, from the parliament. He or she will not be a parliament member anymore in real life because uh, in order to run for the parliament, you have to accept the constitution. Okay, uh, let's go to the next issue. And that is, um, before we get to the next issue, and you may say, well, the Israeli and the Palestinian governments would object to this. Uh, to the, so we believe that they do not have a reason to object to a common government. They do not, they haven't been able to make peace. Uh, this government will be sh showing a, 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 a real good prospect of making peace. The Israeli and the Palestinian and the Hamas government do not have the authority, the legal authority, the legal, the, uh, the moral authority, the technical ability uh, to, um, uh, disrupt this, and they never attempted to disrupt it But in the past. We did have an election in, two tw in uh, December of 1212, and we had a full page ad. This is the full page ad in the New York Times, and neither the Israeli nor the Palestinian governments attempted to disrupt the election. This ad ran three months before the election, and they did not attempt to disrupt the election. Okay, so now that we have a constitution, we have a parliament, we need to decide on who to give a veto, a veto power to. And I am proposing to grant a veto power as follows. Libby, could you please read it? The Confederation is the government of the entire population of Israel, the West Bank and Gaza. We hereby bestow a veto power related to legislation affecting sovereignty to the following, the government of Israel, the Palestinian Authority, Hamas. In the event of changes in governments, this legislation may be amended or repealed. Does anyone have any question regarding this declaration to grant a veto to the government of Israel, the Palestinian Authority and Hamas? Questions? I have a question. Yes. Shouldn't, shouldn't the three be legitimate and equal? And for instance, you have uh, the Israeli government, it's a state, the Palestinian Authority, 
it's an entity that it's uh, uh, its legitimacy has expired and Hamas, which has no legitimacy at all, shouldn't there, if you want to give veto power to legislative legislations that you want to make, shouldn't it be given to legal entities? Uh, no, because we recognize that they have um, the ability to prevent us from, from doing what we want to do, which is peace. We understand their reality. We do not judge their legitimacy. Their legitimacy, it, it may be important, but it's not important to us in order to implement the legislation that we need. So as far as we are concerned, all three governments are not legitimate, but we recognize that they have physical ability to prevent us from doing what we uh, want to do. And in order to work with them, we give them a veto power. Any other question? Uh, so do you give a knife to the person who is uh, your competitor and who does not believe in you and in order for him to uh, end your life so that you do not act, do you give him that power? I'm sorry, I, I didn't understand the question. The question is that by giving, I'm trying to put a comment into a question so that it will fit being a question. So, because I am, I, I'm saying that if you are going to give this veto power to the Palestinian, to the Israeli government, okay, to the Palestinian Authority or to the Hamas government, why not give it to Wasatiya movement mm -hmm. or to, to the Wasatiya movement or to any other NGO in Palestine? Oh, okay, that's a good question. Because we do, we do not need their authority. They're, they cannot prevent us from entering Gaza, Wasatiya movement, or any other NGO. We, they cannot prevent us from entering Jerusalem. They cannot prevent us from, if, if that movement, if we, in our judgment, would be able to, or is likely to prevent us from reaching our people. Remember, I am the president of the whole area. I am the president of 14 million people. I have 14 million people in Israel, the West Bank and Gaza. And my, my interest is to be able to reach them and to create the best uh, uh, opportunity for them, the best. And I know that if I do not, uh, play ball with the government of Israel or with the Palestinian Authority or Hamas, I will be precluded from reaching my people. Wasatia is insignificant to us. We can do it. We don't need to give Wasatia movement. We cannot, we don't need to give them a veto power. We can do it without them. That's the reason. Any other question? So are you submitting to power rather than to write? Yes. Yes. We, 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 our goal is to make peace. Our goal is to, is to do what's right to our people. And if we do not recognize the power, the physical power of the government of Israel, the Palestinian Authority and Hamas, we will not be able to reach our people. That's, that's a common sense that's done all the time. Any other questions? Yeah, so you want it, do you want it uh, top bottom or bottom up? I'm not sure. I mean, one we, are the, we are elected by the 5 million people. We are so the only the legitimate government of the, of the entire area. But we recognize reality. 
And the reality is that there are powers that could prevent us from doing what we are doing, what we want to do. And those powers are the government of Israel, the Palestinian Authority, and Hamas. In order to get their cooperation, we say, we're going to pass legislation. If it affects you, you have a veto power. But if it doesn't affect you, you do not have a veto power. It, it, Joseph, can I just, uh, can you give us an example of what kind of legislation affects sovereignty that they can veto? Yes, that's what we're doing in this simulation. I'll give yeah, you I know, one. but what, what, what kind of, I mean, oh, what, okay. what? Uh, creating, are, uh, okay, sure. Teaching yeah. tolerance and understanding, requiring that both educational system will teach tolerance and understanding of their people. Uh, creating a common joint economic zone between Israel and Gaza. Yes, but, but if Israel vetoes all these. No, no, there is no there? common government. Israel, Israel was never given a veto power over a common government. There was never a common government. But we are just making a, common, a, a government now, a common government now. Exactly, exactly. So, that's but that's we what are we giving... are. Look, we have many, many legislation. I can show you. Yes, that's yes I've, been at, I've been attending the sessions, Joseph, I understand. But if every time there is a, a, something that comes up, a legislation that comes up of improving the Palestinian situation that is not favorable to the Israeli government, it will veto it. And then that's the end of that. Where do we go from there? No, that's not the end of that. That's not the end of that. We are still... A government. It's yes, not but we have e no teeth. even if they if they veto the legislation, and they do, you're right, they do veto the legislation, then we are going to the people of Israel and Palestine and to the people of the world. We go to the American government, to the European government, and we say, look. We are passing common sense legislation and the Israeli government is vetoing it. We go to the people of Israel and we say, you need to replace your government. I, I always tell the prime minister of Israel, I'm going to campaign against you because you are not a member of, and you're not a, 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 a person of peace. It's a process. It's, it's, it, so we are going to stay here for four years. The Israeli government is going to have their issues and they're going to say, well, we need to fight uh, whatever. And we say, no, there is another way to make peace. Here we are. In other words, we are creating political you know, reality. You know what is the Achilles heel and this whole uh, simulation or all, all idea, the Achilles heel is that you, you as, assume two entities that you, you want the, the present status, which has been against peace for so long to remain, and at the same time to create a new entity, which is the Confederacy, not to replace the present uh, dysfunctional system, but rather to become part of it, which will not work. And this is where you have to replace, not to uh, maintain what is happening now, the two systems that are happening now. Uh, and there is a, a whole setup, political setup that's not functional. So you are keeping it, and on the contrary, you are empowering it by giving it a veto power to whatever. On the contrary, you have to wipe it out. You have to erase it. And the people should take power because the people want peace. And the people want, and these uh, entities are obstacles to peace. So you want what the people want. A confederacy, yes. One state, yes. Two states, yes. Whatever, but peace, yes. And so, and the point is, what is, why are you maintaining those two powers 
only because they have political power now on the ground, rather than can you try to replace them with your concept? All right, uh, look, uh, we had uh, 74 years of trying to replace them. It hasn't happened. And we are not against replacing them. If you believe you should replace one of them, we do not take that away from you, okay? We say, go ahead. You can replace whoever you want, either the Israeli or the Palestinian or Hamas governments. We're not against that. We are saying we do not have the power, the military power. We only have soft power, okay? So we do not take it away from you. If you believe that's what should be done, it sounds like that's what you believe in. We don't take that away from you. Go ahead and do it. I don't think that you could, and I don't think we could. And we are, yes, we, we understand that there, you cannot deal with, the, uh, uh, replace them. And that's why we are saying we have no other choice but to create our own government and play ball with these, with these governments, that, in my opinion, all three of these governments are illegitimate, but there's no other, there are, there, there's no other way but to deal with them. Okay, let's take a vote. The um, Israeli uh, Palestinian parliament members, please vote on the veto power. Okay, um, let's, uh, we, we have more uh, Palestinian parliament members. Please vote. Okay, let's end the polling and share the results. 75% of the Palestinian parliament members voted in favor of giving a veto power to all three entities. Let's go to the Israeli parliament members, please vote. Do you support the declaration of intent to grant the veto power? Okay, uh, let's um, end the polling, share the results. 75% exact same number of the Israeli parliament members voted in favor of giving the veto power. So they now when we pass legislation affecting them, we, they have a veto power. Okay, um, let's go to the first uh, uh, piece of legislation um, that Professor Dajani chose to discuss, and that's um, and that would be subject to a veto power. Uh, Libby, could you read uh, teaching tolerance and understanding? Both educational systems to teach tolerance in their public schools devote a certain number of hours for both sides to teach the history of the Israelis and the Palestinians. Prioritizing teaching Arabic and Hebrew in public schools to achieve proficiency of both languages by Israeli and Palestinian students. Create a mutual task force to ensure the teaching of both languages. Educators to draft textbooks together and arrange for a regular exchange of teachers. Public media on both sides to provide fair and equal coverage daily for teaching tolerance. IPC as facilitator to ensure that both sides are fairly represented. We hereby submit this legislation to the Israeli government, the Palestinian government and Hamas. We bestow upon them a veto power which may be exercised in the next 60 days. All right, uh, does anyone have any questions regarding this legislation? Do you, see, do, you, do you think that the Israeli and Hamas and PA will accept such a legislation? Are you asking if they veto the legislation? I'm asking, uh, we are, I, I mean, uh, are we giving them now the power to veto this legislation? Well, let's, let's first have the parliament uh, the parliament uh, uh, vote, uh, it, Palestinian parliament members, please vote. 
Palestinian parliament members. Okay, uh, let's publish the vote. 100% of the Palestinian parliament members voted. And let's have the Israeli parliament voted in favor. Let's have the Israeli parliament members please vote. Okay, uh, let's have the uh, publish the vote. 100% of the Israeli parliament members voted in favor of this. Uh, let's go to the Hamas leader. Uh, uh, Mr. Hamas leader, are you going to veto this legislation? I think he left, but I assume that he would have said yes. Is the uh, Hamas leader, Rafael Castro, are you going to veto this legislation? Let's go to the Palestinian Authority leader. Um, are you going to veto this legislation? No. And, you know, I, I just have to make a small comment here. If we really want peace, we have to learn to live together. And we cannot learn, live to learn together if we are teaching our children to hate each other. So, you know, this, this cannot go. This is a vicious circle. Do we want to break it or do we want to keep in it? Right. I agree. Okay. The, Hamas the, the, the Hamas leader did leave uh, officially. He said it in the chat. Uh, he okay. was the one that voted. He was the one that voted on the first legislation also. Okay. So Hamas leader left? Is Hamas? Yes, yeah, yes. He let he he told everyone he was leaving and did not believe in the plan. Okay. Um, is the Prime Minister of Israel? Are you going to veto this legislation? No, oh, I think it's all very uh, uh, helpful. Okay, so you're and not going to veto this legislation? No, I accept uh, it. Okay, so let's have uh, uh, Professor Dajani give us his opinion. I believe these are great points and uh, these are all part of uh, peace building. And that's why uh, I'm glad that the PA and the Israel has not, uh, does not veto it. Okay, but the, the question is really not whether you believe in this legislation. Obviously, based on your CV, you are a person of peace, you believe in. The question is, do you see the, um, the ability of a common government with 300 parliament members uh, being elected with 5 million people voting? Do you see that scenario that they can influence, that that government will have its own political power to influence the reality in the ground with the existing governments are we making some yeah. yeah yes because i believe that these are the right thing to do and nobody uh, no neither the pa nor the israeli government will uh, be able to survive saying no to doing what is right okay so it sounds like you are changing your mind a little bit about this common government. I'm changing my mind about the system, not about the, how they approach, because I don't believe in either, because what you are talking about here is that Palestinian Authority and Israel. I believe Israel is made up of different uh, tendencies and political parties. So uh, the present government might oppose this, this, uh, this legislation, but a more, pro, a more liberal government might not. The same thing, the Palestinian, I believe that the Palestinian Authority would support this legislation, although they may do nothing to implement it on the ground. So let, let me ask you a question, Professor Dejani. If let's say there is real election, in real election, a real time, real election, would you vote in the election? 
for a common no. government? You live in Jerusalem. Yeah. Would you vote for uh, the person, the Palestinian or Israeli person in your district who would run, who is running in your district? And would you vote for the uh, prime minister, uh, for the president? Would you vote or would you keep yourself outside? You would refuse to vote. No, no, it's not I ref if I refuse if, to vote. But look, if there is, if, if there is, uh, uh, if there are parties that do not have a peace agenda, so I will not vote. And you, uh, will, you will not vote even if you, I, I, even if there is a person in your district that you think is a good person. No, no, I will vote if he is a good person. You will vote. But, yeah. But okay. Well, there may be there may be ten or twenty candidates in your in your district, and there may be ten or twenty candidates for president. So there is a possibility you would vote, right? Yeah. Did you say yes? Yes, yes. I'm saying yes. Okay. I I believe in democracy, and I believe that people should take part in a democratic system. Okay. Um, Let's go to the next uh, legislation. Uh, Le Libby, could you please read it? Libby had to leave. Could you ask someone else to read it? Uh, okay. Uh, there's any uh, Charles, you want to read it? Sure. Uh, redrawing the wall. Call on Israel to redraw the wall in certain locations in order to reduce hardship on both the Palestinian and Israeli people while maintaining security for both. We hereby submit this legislation to the Israeli government, the Palestinian government, and Hamas. We bestow upon them a veto power which may be exercised in the next 60 days. And does anyone have any questions regarding this legislation? Why doesn't the legislation say instead of uh, and, um, Building the instead of saying to uh, redraw the wall, to say take away the wall. Right, that, that's a very good question, and because we have both Israelis and Palestinian parliament members, and based this is a legislation that I propose, and I am um, I would be in favor of removing the wall altogether, but I want to see what would be realistic that both sides will agree to. Not what's perfect, but what's realistic. So let's take a vote and see how this thing uh, comes up. Uh, redrawing the wall. Let's have the Palestinian parliament members please vote. Palestinian parliament. Okay. Um, publish the vote. 89% of the Palestinian parliament members voted in favor of this legislation. Let's have the Israeli parliament members. Let's publish the vote. 100% of the Israeli uh, uh, parliament members. Now, we also have another legislation, just like Professor Dajani suggested. Let's see, maybe that will submit work. that to the veto. I'm sorry? You have to submit it for veto. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Okay. Uh, uh, to veto it. Israeli Prime Minister, are you going to veto this? Of course. Nobody's telling me where to put the wall. The wall is there for one specific reason. When things change, I will change it. I don't need anybody else participating and telling me what to I'm do. I'm not asking you to give a speech. Are you going to veto it or not? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, uh, Palestinian pre president, are you going to veto it or not? Uh, no, I'm not going to veto it. Okay. So, Mr. Prime Minister, you've had this wall now for almost 20 years. Yes. The wall does not, your security people said that the wall has a whole bunch of opening in them. If someone wants to go through from, from the West Bank into Israel, there is no problem whatsoever. Um, so what would be your justification in keeping the wall 
if it doesn't do what you want it to do? Well, it does do what I want it to do. And if there are holes in the wall, I should send my team out and prepare those holes. Uh, it's, my, it's, it's the security of my people that the wall went in in the first place and, uh, and it is effective. Well, uh, your security people say that it's not effective. No, and they don't. Way, what would be your criteria in deciding when to remove the wall altogether? When there is, when there is a peace agreement, and I believe there will be a peace agreement before there is the IPC, because the IPC functions really with the permission of the Palestinian Authority and Israel. So when there is a peace agreement and when terrorism is reduced to the point that I feel security, then the wall can come down. Okay, but you haven't been able to make peace in 74 we, we years. And you know that, that the likelihood of you reaching an agreement with the Palestinian uh, government um, is, I, I mean, no one preventing you from having a peace agreement. You haven't been able to make it. So well, I, why, I not have... make, why not make the, pe the lives of the people easier when the wall is, has no function whatsoever? But well, the wall has a function. 25th of our population is Arab. They live better than any other Arabs in the Middle East. Yeah, they're, they're not. Un, they're not no, unhappy. No, no. Regardless of the wall, that they they don't live better or worse because of the wall. You just no, they live better or worse because they live in a democratic society, which but is they egalitarian. They are not allowed to vote. What rights? All right. What, what, what okay, the, so um, let's Jesus go to magic. the next issue. And, and by the way, Mr. Prime Minister, as the president of the whole area, I am the only legitimate president of the whole area. I am going to work to campaign in your government to remove you as the prime minister, because I think that you are dangerous to the people of Israel and Palestine, and you are not a person of peace, even though you changed, you, you, you did not veto the previous legislation. But I don't think that I think that you 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 do not have good intentions of making peace. I and have I'm all going... the intention of the world of making peace. I resent mm -hmm. you saying that, and uh, I have I am not going to sacrifice my people for a principle that you have no idea. Uh, I've I've lived I've been to Israel I've been to the area when there was no walls. It was that way before the Second Intifada. That destroyed the peace of the area. And when and when when there is no more pay to pay, pay pay to slay, then I'll consider this again. But I don't need you to tell me when to put up a wall or when not to put up a wall in my own country. Okay. Well, first of all, it's also my country. It's no, it's not. No, it's not. You, absolutely, you are... it is. I, it is absolutely my country. I am a citizen, just like you are. And I have, you do not have ownership of this country. Um, you are elected by less people than me. And you are elected by less people, Israeli people than me. And I have much higher moral authority, much higher legal authority than you do. And for you to say that this is not my country is, Shameful, and that's why I think I, you should be I, removed I did, as prime minister. I did, I, you, I did not all say you want is your own power. That's it. I, you don't did, care about no, your own people. I did not say you are not part of this country. What I am saying is, I am the legal authority in the eyes of the world. You are an entity which is trying to be helpful, and I appreciate that. You are the legal authority of nine million people. I am, the, I am the legal authority of 14 million people. I represent and one I've of the 10. Elected, but I'm, I'm not going to argue with you anymore. I think that we got the point. This is not really a pissing uh, match. It's just a to, uh, to explain how this thing works. Uh, all right. So I think that we are we're already an hour and a half. And let's have, I'm going to stop the uh, PowerPoint to give Professor Dajani and the audience an opportunity to discuss this further. And 
and to have an open discussion. Uh, Professor Dajani, let's hear your comments now that you heard, that you saw how this thing is playing. What would you like me to comment on? What the hell, how do you... Your general impression. I mean, I'm glad to hear that you, that you, there is a possibility that you would be um, voting if there was such an election, okay? So let's have uh, Charles, let's have people ask you a question or ask me a question. Let's okay. have uh, Charles ask uh, the first question. Charles Frederick, please. Um, well, the, to me, the, uh, the attraction of uh, the IPC approach is that it creates a third focus of power, if you will. Right now we have people in the Israeli camp who are more or less controlled by the right wing. We have people in the Palestinian camp who are constantly being uh, subjugated to the power whims of the Israeli camp. And so this creates the ongoing hostility in which there is no locked in that, you know, as you could see with Len's comments, locked in that perspective there's really very little option for people to get together and have any kind of political leverage to move forward because through their own sides, it's pretty locked up. But that negates the possibility of the re obvious recognition that this is not uh, a helpful situation. And everybody sees that. I think, and everybody feels that. They just want to be able to define it in their own ways. So I guess, uh, Professor Dajani, I, I am extremely impressed by your CV, by the things that you have gone through in your life to try and create some, you know, coming together in that regard. And um, regardless of whether it's the IPC approach or I know there's other possible political movements towards, you know, a one state solution or to try and get together some kind of two state solution, regardless of what it is, um, I'm wondering what you see as the potential for creating a third political labor of power where people can come together and have an effect uh, collectively, that that they're being prevented from having doing so right now, by their more or less by the status quo of the political situation. I believe that people have the courage uh, in order to overcome the fear, then they can have that entity, and I believe it's useful to have that entity because we are we what our objective is peace, whether it is one state, two state, confederacy state, or what uh, Joseph is suggesting to have this over uh, this third uh, entity of uh, people working together. I believe the point is my only difference there is that you should not let it uh, in uh, harmony with the present situation. In the sense that peace is there to overcome the lack of peace at present because people, uh, the governments at present is for the status quo. They benefit from the status quo. Both of them, the PA uses anti-normalization to scare the people of normalization. And that's why we tell the people normalization to end the, the occupation is good. Normalization to empower the occupation is bad. So you have that distinction, but they, they don't make that distinction. At the same time, the same thing with the Israeli in the sense that BDS talks about Israel as the enemy and Israel as a whole, as if there are no uh, political 
differences within the state of Israel. And so that's why we work to empower the peace camp. And uh, here we support what Joseph is doing, but without that idea of giving vetoes to Hamas, to the Israeli government, to the uh, PA, but rather to make it as an entity and on its own. And in this way, I find even if uh, the PA opposes it or the Israeli government or Hamas, so what? And this is, this is not to mean that you should cooperate with the other despite in order just for your own uh, survival. And uh, that's why I strongly believe that what we should do is work for peace and trying to build a culture of moderation uh, that will usher in uh, reconciliation, that will usher in uh, negotiations in good faith, that will eventually lead to peace, development, uh, security, and uh, coexistence. So basically, we have to move on from here, but not to accept the negative status quo. You have to reject the status quo in order to move to the future. You have to leave the past behind because it's a big burden. You have to overcome the present and move towards the future. But if you want to carry your present with you to the future, there will be no future. That's my analysis. So are you, Professor Dejani, are you in favor of dismantling either the Hamas or the Palestinian Authority or the government of Israel? And if so, I'm not how saying, do you do I'm that? Not saying, I'm not saying dismantling. I'm saying that they will wither away in the sense that the Israeli government will be replaced in a democratic way by people who will vote for peace and for liberal uh, vision so that the extremists will not remain in power. Because I believe that the status of Israel, like the status of Palestine, that it is divided into three sectors. One sector, which is the secular on the left, and then the middle, the moderates in the middle, and the extremists on the right. And the moderates are the ones now voting for the extremists because they want security. Uh, and at the same time, the moderates in Palestine who voted in 1996 for Fatah, they voted in 2006 for Hamas. Now, we want those moderates to see that the future does not belong neither to Fatah nor to Hamas, but rather to them, to the moderates. And uh, as a result, that they should shift their vote towards a new, a new vision. The same thing with Israel. And we want this fear that cripples the voter and makes him vote for security uh, for the right wing because they instill in him a feeling of fear. Then uh, we want to, re to remove that and to make him feel secure that the Palestinians are not there for the big dream of river to sea. At the same time that he will also shift his vision from river to sea to two states. And that's our vision in the sense to have a two state solution to start with, then we could move to a, one, to a confederal state and we can then move to a one state depending on what the people want. But basically now we feel that the people want a two-state solution because in the two-state solution, there will be aspirations for both and also there will be legitimacy because the 1947 UN resolution uh, declared a two states, a Jewish state and an Arab state. The Jewish state became a reality. The Arab state is still virtual. So we have to have justice here and have 
a two state uh, within this legitimate framework. Um, would you say, uh, Professor Dajani, that uh, to have a common government that as we are proposing is inconsistent with the two state and, and the other question is, would you say, would you recommend that we abandon our vision until the two states are created? And the third question is, um, since the two states haven't been created in 74 years, um, what makes you believe that in fact, it will be created? I will answer from the last question. I believe that the two states will be created because it is the interna by international law. This is what the international community believes in. And it is only vetoed by, the, by Israel, supported by the United States, which threatens a veto power in uh, the Security Council if the call for a state is there. So I do believe you, that- Do you-, do you, do you uh, uh, believe that we should abandon our our effort to create one government for the entire area? I think you should abandon the idea to have a two entities, one entity, which is what you are calling for. That's, that's not the to... question. The question is, do you believe we should abandon our effort to create one government for the whole area? I think it is not um, it is not realistic because this is exactly what Fatah uh, called for back in 1968 when Khalid when Khalid Yashruti, the PA leader Fatah leader called for a secular democratic state and it was never accepted uh, by the by Israel. Also, it was later supported in 1970 at the, at the conference for the, in support of the Palestinian people in Egypt, where Nabil Shad, in his uh, speech, called for the establishment of a secular democratic state, which did not happen. That was back in 1970. So that's why I don't think what was rejected in 1970 I doubt very much it will be accepted in 2022. Okay. So that's so, why. So, so let me be very specific about those assumptions. You said they are not realistic. Is it realistic to have online election? No, why not? Last three months. Is that unrealistic? No, I think uh, online elections could take place and uh, provided there are no fraud and uh, Others, uh, there has been countries that have used it. Okay, so it is it is realistic to have an election for 14 million people, correct? It's good. It's a it's an exercise. Yes. Okay, but it is realistic. It's possible. It's it's a it's a it's a technical technical requirement. Basically, it's just a, a matter of technical uh, ability to do the election. Correct? Elections for what? This is my question. An election for a common government, for parliament and president. Is that unrealistic? Would you say that if we give, if there are, if the 14 people, 14 million people are aware of it, are you saying that they will not vote? Are you saying that it's not possible to do the election? That's what I'm asking. I think they will. I think uh, you will not. They will not vote one because there is okay. a so lot of. What is the basis upon which you opine that they will not vote for a common government? What is it? What is your basis for that? Because lack of trust. Because there is. So much. Okay, but this is. Trust. But if you have Israeli, that's why. That's running, why we are arguing for the two-state solution in order to build trust between the. I, I, I'm not. I, I'm not arguing against the two-state solution. 
Okay, I am asking you, are these assumptions, why are they, in your opinion, unrealistic? Or are they unrealistic? I already asked you, would you vote? You said, yes, you would vote if there was someone. So I'm asking you, why do you think that, let me go through the first line, online election for 14 million people. Just technically, is that possible to do? Yes, of course. Okay. Then is it unrealistic to think that 5 million people would vote if there is an, a, a, an awareness of this? Is that unrealistic? I think it is. Because I think that people will not believe in it. And so they will not waste time voting. But technically speaking, there could be the elections could take place. But realistically speaking, how many people will, ta will take part? OK, well, that is a big question. I agree with you. I agree with you, OK? That's a big question. I, I agree. There could be five. It could be two million. It could be one million. It could be. So I, I, believe, I believe that. If one million voted. What will that mean to you? I think it would be tremendous political power. It would be it would be a complete change in in reality. If one million people voted, it would be tremendous. You cannot ignore one million people. You cannot ignore a president and vice president who are elected. You cannot ignore three hundred parliament members who are elected. That it, 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 it just like any democracy. What I am basically saying to you is that right now, because we have the internet and we have the ability to connect with people regardless of, of their government, we can make a change. But let's, let's do a, a, a survey right now, the post, let's do the survey. After participating in the uh, in the simulation, do you believe that common government could make peace? So this is for both the Israelis and the Palestinians. Vote either yes or no. Let's end the polling. Um, 84% voted yes, 16% voted no. I think at the beginning there was 80% who voted yes, and now it's 84%, which is, which is uh, uh, much better, okay? So regardless, look, we only spent here an hour and a half, and we already had, we saw a change in thinking. Um, and so the, my question to you, uh, Professor Dejani, you already said you will vote, okay? And you said you are in favor of the two-state solution. We are not against the two-state solution. The governments could agree, but we are being realistic here. Let's go to, um, first of all, you know- uh, Let me comment, uh, Joseph. Yeah. Let me okay. explain something. Sure, sure, sure. Something. First, I applaud what you are doing. What I disagree with is the part about Fatah and Hamas and the this. But if you are talking about uh, having people take part in an online voting for peace, for the uh, for peace education, for reconciliation, for tolerance for empathy, for all these, then even if 100,000 votes, that's excellent. Because maybe tomorrow, they will become 200,000. Tomorrow, the next day, there will come a day when they will be 10 million or 14. Million. Now you're talking, now you're talking. But, but forget about the part on of Hamas and PA and the others, because that's what I'm opposed to. When you introduce in your, in your uh, uh, framework these entities, which I believe 
are not working for peace and so or are obstacles to peace even any from that but if you are talking about working online to have people vote for peace and uh, continuing doing that people will support that idea anything that will then you are planting seeds of peace in an arid area area well, that's good for you and we support any effort that would call for peace or negotiate peace or call for people to think about peace or to inspire the idea of peace in people. So I believe that anything done in that direction is, uh, is excellent because then it will lead us eventually to the same goal that we have, which is to have peace in this region. All right, um, let me have other people ask you a question. Let's start with Phil and then Len. And I would like Carl, Carl, you're not raising your hand, but I know you're listening and we exchanged some emails and I'm wondering if the simulation helped you understand what this is about. Okay, so let's have Phil and then Len and then Carl. Okay, Phil, hi, hi everyone. And my question's for Professor Jajani. Uh, I'm happy to see that there's been something of a meeting of minds just in the last few minutes. Uh, it seemed like both of you are keen on moving things forward towards breaking the stalemate and finding a way to finally deliver peace to this land somehow. And the argument was which way might be the most realistic to do so. And so my question is regarding Hamas and Fatah and the Israeli government, I understand your discomfort with the idea of giving them uh, veto powers because it's effectively entrenching them, strengthening them. And as it happens, I do remember a simulation quite a while ago when uh, other, others raised a, a flag uh, against the idea of especially giving a veto to Hamas. Uh, many Israelis were saying that. And, and the idea was suggested that maybe it should be rather than giving a veto to Hamas, and Fatah specifically naming them, that maybe it should be just a general veto to the Palestinian elected government, whoever they might be. Um, yes. And that's, that means we're less empowering specifically Fatah and Hamas. But my question to you, Professor Jajani, is do you feel that realism means that we do have to work with what is? Um, effectively, Joseph Avasar is saying that we can't ignore the fact that there are entities in power and in order to effect a change we can't just wait for them to wither away and that maybe we do have to work with them in some way without empowering them um, maybe empower change from within uh, planting seeds that would cause those those government entities to undergo a change from within and move us all towards um, a better outcome for all of us. Do you believe that's possible and realistic to do something like that? It depends because I feel that uh, one way any, uh, to have them not wither away, but being undermined so that they are not effective anymore is for Israel to recognize the state of Palestine. Uh, and in this way, there will be a legitimate entity that Israel will deal with. And thus, uh, what I oppose is instead of having uh, Joseph putting Hamas uh, and uh, the PA, uh, which is not the PA, but rather Fatah, uh, as entities to put the state of Palestine. And in this way, it will become much more realistic, the goal, rather than to have these illegitimate political entities, because we have to, we have to consider the legitimacy of these entities, whether they are legitimate or not. And what, and we, in that, that that's to consider the, their significance. And as a result, I believe that if there could be a change of, uh, dealing with the reality, but the reality being acknowledging the state of Palestine, which is 183 nations have, a, have recognized the state of Palestine. And so only 
it is opposed by a few among them, Israel and the United States. And as a result, if we can overcome this, then we, we, can, we are much more realistic on the ground to speak about peace rather than to take the status quo. I am against the status quo and I'm against empowering the status quo because the status quo has proved so far it is not for peace and that peace will never happen in, within the status quo and that on the contrary, powers within that status quo will always oppose peace because it's, peace is not in their interest, whether it is on the Palestinian side because it will usher in democracy or the Israeli side because it will usher in the other parties rather than the ruling party. And so in this way, to be realistic, let us acknowledge the presence of the state of Palestine and then deal with that entity. If you do that, then I'm, I'm seeing that you are being realistic much more than telling me that I want to take the status quo and deal with it. Let's go to Len. Me, is it? Am I? Yeah, yeah, we're going to land okay, and, then, and then Shiraz. Okay. Hey, hi, Professor. I'm very happy to hear your ideas and hear your speech. Oh, I'm sorry, Shiraz. I should have called you earlier. I didn't see that. I apologize. But okay. go ahead, Len. Uh, I agree with you that uh, there should be a state of Palestine, but uh, that's only going to happen when there's peace between Israel and Palestinian Authority. But uh, I agree with the IPC from the concept of uh, somebody has to facilitate a lot of things which aren't being done. Uh, I don't think that's going to create peace. What I want to ask you, do you think that, uh, that the Abraham Accord countries can be the catalyst for peace between the Palestinian Authority and Israel? Yes, and I have written an article that was published by Fikra Forum of the Washington Institute, arguing for the Abrahamic Accords as bridges to peace. Because I believe that in 2002, the Arab Peace Initiative was a collective initiative by the Arab states, which Israel rejected at the time. And so now, 20 years later, we are having uh, individualistic approaches by uh, governments, uh, by Arab governments. And as a result, I believe that it is important because they will be building bridges between the Palestinians and Israel. And uh, in this way, like Jordan and uh, Egypt played a very important role in uh, re resolving conflicts between Palestinians and Israelis, I believe that the uh, Paramic Accords do, will play that role. But I uh, also, I strongly believe that the Palestinians should be involved. If the PA continues to reject the Abrahamic Accord, it should be with the civil servant, with the civil society. And as a result, but they should be involved because the Palestinian, the Arab government, it is now government to government, but in order to make it people to people, the Palestinians should be part of that accord. Thank okay. you. Thank uh, you. Shiraz, uh, Len, do you have a follow-up question? No, I want to say thank you. I agree that they should be part of the, uh, the Abraham Accords. Okay, Shiraz. Right. Sorry. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, we I'm can sure. hear you, but we don't see you very well. Can you put the camera okay. so? Can you see me now? Or because yeah, my. Now we see you better. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Professor, I wanted to ask you about the question. Do you consider this uh, 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 issue of Israel and Palestine as a religious issue or a race issue? Because a lot of Bible is used to justify what Israel is doing. And my second question is, what was your reaction of your students? I don't know how many you took them to Poland, but uh, how did they react and 
who was paying for the trip because I think that they are related. So if you can tell me what is the position of those students now and, and what was their reaction? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, let me answer the second question first. Uh, the uh, reaction of students were, well, in general speaking, were very positive. It was, we took 27 stu students to Auschwitz. The, originally, they were supposed to be 30. And uh, two at the last mom moments decided under pressure not to go. And one, a Hamas leader who wanted to cross to Jordan to travel to Poland was not allowed to, to do that. Uh, however, when I think it was a very informative uh, for them because these students come from a background where there is a lot of uh, anti-Semitism, Holocaust denial, uh, religion is taught in an anti-Jewish way, and uh, the, edu the education does not discuss and include Holocaust education. And so to them, they came from a background which uh, did not uh, either deny the Holocaust or link the Holocaust to their Nakba or questioned the uh, uh, reality of the Holocaust. And as a result, coming to Auschwitz and seeing what they saw, I think it, it left a lot of uh, impact on them and the sense of they saw for themselves what they would never had expected. I uh, said to them on the flight going there, I said, I'm taking you there so that for you, for knowledge, it is up to you for you to decide uh, for yourself whether the Holocaust is a hoax or is it a reality? by seeing what you, what you would see there. And so they came and they saw, and many of them, most of them changed their mind. And they wrote articles that reflected this empathy. One of them said, uh, it did not make me less realist, uh, less nationalistic. It made me more humanistic. Another said, when they saw the, uh, sign on the entrance, uh, which said, uh, Arbeit macht frei, then uh, uh, work sets you free. She uh, asked about that. And then I suggested she read about it. She bought a book in which the leader, uh, the Nazi camp leader was telling the prisoners descending from the trains all you who enter here abandon hope for the only way out is through the chimney of the crematorium. So this student realized that this is not a work camp where you can work and eventually you will be set free. Herself being nine years in jail, she in Israeli jails, she, under, she was able to make the distinction between her situation and the situation of that Jewish prisoner. And uh, many of them actually had uh, uh, questions about what happened. One of them said, why should we learn about the Holocaust when the Israelis do not teach about the Nakba or make it illegal to celebrate the Nakba? The response was simple, because you will be doing the right thing. So basically, I believe that the trip was very useful in enlightening those students who are now very valuable for me in my work with Holocaust education, because with their, uh, with their articles that they wrote and with their ideas that they shared with their relatives, with their friend, it is making a change. It's a dent in the wall, but eventually, once we keep making such dents, I think it is important. One student wrote in English in support of the trip and it was, an article was published in the Atlant Atlantic Journal. And the other wrote an article that was published in Al-Quds newspaper. 
So to have the courage to stand up against the taboo, I think that that's important. And I believe that more knocking on the wall will bring that wall down. He wanted to know who paid for the trip. The, uh, the trip was funded by German Research Institute, the DFG, and it was sponsored by a German university, the Frederick Schiller University, in unilateral cooperation between Al Quds University, uh, Tel Aviv University, and Ben Gurion University. We took to 30 Israeli students to the Haitian camps to teach them about the Palestinian Nakba. The idea of the project was to understand to what extent does learning about the suffering of the other cause them to have this empathy for the other, causing them to have reconciliation with the other. So that was the concept of the uh, project. What about the first question about whether it's a religious war or a, or a race No, war? this is not, a, look, I have been with this conflict all my life. In the 50s, in the 60s, in the 70s, in the 80s, uh, we never heard of this conflict as a religious conflict. In the last few decades, it was tainted or it was colored to become a religious conflict, which it is not. This is a political conflict about land. It is not a religious conflict about to whom God gave this land. And this is, uh, uh, I, I was a facilitator in a, a meeting in uh, Antalya back in the late 90s, where we had uh, teachers from Bar Ilan University teaching religion, Jewish religion, and teachers teaching Islamic uh, religion. And, and we had uh, a meeting in Atlanta, uh, this meeting in, at, uh, in Turkey. Um, and uh, in the first session, the, uh, they were talking religion, saying, God, the, Jewish, the Jewish rabbis would say, God gave us this land. And the Palestinian religious leaders would say, God is not interested in real estate. God is not a real estate agent. This is not, a, uh, this is not a, uh, something God is interested. So I raised the question, what is more important, a big dream or a small hope? After they cooled down and they asked me, what, what did I mean by the big dream and the small hope? I said, the big dream is for but for Israelis to wake one morning and to have the Israel built from river to sea with Yerushalayim as the capital. What is the big dream for the Palestinian is to wake up one morning and uh, they will have their state of Palestine from land to sea and Al-Quds Sharif as their capital. The only problem with this is that the Israelis and the Palestinians are there and the, the problem is for one to have his big dream, he should extinguish the other. Do you want that? And they said, no. I said, then you are for the small hope, which means that you want to live together in peace, whether in one state or two states or three states, doesn't matter, but you want to live together near each other, uh, in neighborly relation with you. And so basically, the idea here that this is not a religious war. This is not a religious contest or religious rivalry. It is a political issue on land. It can be solved, whether today or tomorrow. If we plant seeds of peace, eventually we will reap these seeds of peace and eventually there will be peace. All right, let's go to Sharon Weinshelbaum. Thank you, Joseph. So um, I put a comment about the UN in the chat, and I thought I would just ask you or anybody here um, about that. I, I have the impression that um, a lot of Palestinians in the West Bank and in Gaza live in refugee camps that are 
set up and sponsored by the UN. So can anybody else give those people permanent status? And, you know, in the territories, I mean, are they, con it just seems like to keep them in this limbo and refugee status is not um, constructive. It's not, it's, it's, it's not good for anybody. So um, maybe you could answer that or, or Mohammed could answer that. I what think is your they question? should be allowed to return to the state of Palestine. Uh, so I think that the refugees should be given the opportunity, whether they want to return to the state of Palestine or whether to have options to go anywhere they want, but not to remain as refugees in their camps and to be compensated for their for their uh, losses. When you when you say they should be able to go anywhere they want, then they can go back to Israel and what is we that believe mean? in Wasatia. We believe in Wasatia that the right of return is holy. The right is holy. The return is negotiable. So we believe that they want to come back. I would believe that they want to come back to the state of Palestine, not to the state of Israel, because they are not returning to become Israeli citizens, but they are returning to become Palestinian citizens. And as a result, I believe if they are given the choice, that's the choice they would have. But first there has to be and uh, a formality for them to become citizens. There has to be something, an entity to a state to be a citizen of, right? Yeah, the state of Palestine. Yeah. Um, uh, and let me, do you, do we have a, uh, a legislation on that. And um, the IPC, we have a, a specific legislation on that point. There are people in limbo. And we are suggesting that there would be the citizens of the Israeli-Palestinian common government. We are, the, we are, if we continue with this uh, uh, um, assumption, we will be the only government that would be legitimate. It would be able to issue them passports. Uh, it would be able to issue them identity card. It would be able to manage all their social needs, everything give them everything they need that the Israeli and the Palestinian governments are unable to give. That's another great reason to have a common government. Because look, uh, I disagree with uh, Professor Dajani that it is realistic to talk about the state of Palestine, even the state of Israel. And it's unrealistic to talk about Hamas. It's the opposite. We have Hamas. When you talk about realism, you talk about what's real right now. And right now we have Hamas. We have the government of Israel. We do not have the Palestinian state. So what Professor Dejani is suggesting is, that is exactly unrealistic. But to answer your question, the common government will have so much more flexibility because it is not tied into this uh, Israeli or Palestinian narrative. It is allowed to have its own narrative. And the narrative is the good of the people in Israel, Palestine, regardless of how the Palestinians see the conflict or the Israelis see the conflict. A common government will have its own perspective for the whole area. May I comment, Joseph? I'm May sorry? I comment? May I comment? Sure, sure. I would tell you the story of this rabbi where those two Jews came to him and they first told this side of the story. Uh, they came to him to judge among between them because they had a conflict. And the first said this side of the story and the rabbi told them, you're right. The second said this side of the story, and the rabbi told him, you are right. So after they left, 
the wife of the rabbi looked at them surprised and said, but rabbi, how can they both be right? And he said to her, you are also right. So I believe you are right, I'm right, he is right, everybody is right. Yeah, but you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I accept that. <laughs> All right, let's go to Sean and then Charles. Hi, uh, okay, hold on one sec. Yeah, now, uh, according to uh, what uh, Mohammed Dejani was mentioning, he mentioned that uh, there shouldn't be Hamas and uh, Fatah. There should be just one Palestinian. And uh, he mentioned that if, uh, if, there, if these parties are divided, that's, uh, that's going to create problems. Uh, it won't be, uh, there should be just Israel-Palestine because if, uh, if each party are divided, just like Palestine are divided between Hamas and Fatah, that would make pro that would uh, create more. Uh, they wouldn't be reaching peace. They would be having more difficulties reaching peace if they're divided. Imagine if Israel uh, is divided, like there's going to be a right wing and a left wing party, just like uh, Hamas and Fatah. Like the more divided the these parties are, the more harder it's going to be hard to reach peace, and it's going to be more harder for the IPC to even uh, negotiate with these parties. So, you think the you think that by them being more divided, the more harder for the IPC to even um, try to confront them with peace if they're more. So I, I, I do agree that they need to be uh, united more in order for them to reach peace. But, uh, but seeing them divided uh, by themselves is, uh, so do you think, uh, you know, by being more divided, it's not gonna reach anything. It's gonna be even worse than what it is now, right? Right, because uh, even these, even these, divisions are not legitimate because the Palestinian Authority, which is now calling itself the state of Palestine, is considered to be in the eyes of the nations to be the legitimate ruler. So why include Hamas, which is illegitimate, took power illegitimately, and it's not recognized by anybody, and giving it a legitimate status by considering it as a, legit, as a legitimate entity. So that's why one should consider the state of Palestine as the legitimate representative of the Palestinian and deal with it from that perspective. Well, let me, let me answer that question too. It all depends on the specific legislation that is being proposed. I believe that both Hamas, Israel, and the PA, they need to have legitimacy from their own people. They cannot just act in a vacuum. They are not kings, even if we think that they are, they are not. They need legitimacy. And they need but, uh, to be able- Joseph, Joseph, Joseph. Israel is legitimate in the sense that it is elected by the people and it's a legitimate government. Hamas, right. as you said, power. And the PA is part of a, an entity that was created by Oslo for four years. So I, uh, look, the, I, I, saw, I saw a speech. Okay, every speech that I see, either from Israel or Hamas or the PA, the only thing they say, they justify their own position because the other side is unreasonable in their eyes. They need to go to their people and say, look, we do what we do because the other side is unreasonable. They always say that. Why do they say that? Because they need legitimacy from their own people. They need legitimacy. Yeah, but that does not give them legitimacy. That's the point. No, I, I didn't say that's not the way to get no, legitimacy. I, I, I didn't say it gives them legitimacy. I say they need legitimacy. They are they need to help to have the, the they have they need to have important. justification. The PA for what has not had voting. Hamas has not had voting. People did not vote for Hamas in since 2006. I agree. Look, I, I agree with you. I am saying they need to justify what they are doing. And the way they justify what they are doing is by showing the other side being worse 
that if you do not do what I tell you to do, things are going to be worse. That I do what I want, what I'm doing is because of Israel or because of Hamas or because of the PA. What I am trying to tell you is that when there is a common government, government by the people of Israel, the West Bank and Gaza, parliament members in Gaza, parliament members in Israel, in the, PA, in the, in the West Bank, then they cannot, they don't have an argument against their own people. They can have an argument against the enemy, but not against their own people. They cannot have an argument against legitimacy that was provided by their own people. That's the power of democracy. Look, before we had democracy, we had kings, okay? We had kings and, and, and the kings also needed legitimacy and they lost legitimacy to a democracy. That's why I, I think that the Israeli government, Hamas, the PA, they will all lose legitimacy when there is a legitimate entity that is supported by the people themselves. You are using the word democracy in a world that does not, that's not democratic. That's the problem. No, that's not the problem. It was not democratic. People did not vote until the people that moved to Israel in 1948, 99% of them did not live in a democracy, including the Palestinians themselves did not live in democracy. The, the democracy is easy as voting. It's easier to vote than to ride a bicycle. You do not have to have a huge history of democracy. Judaism is not democratic. Islam is not democratic. Christianity is not democratic. It's easier, it's easy to create a democracy, a democratic system if you make it easy for them to vote. That's, 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 that's all it takes, is, is making well, the would, right to vote I would, easy. I would disagree because I think that democracy is a way of life and it's not a matter of voting. It's a way of life. I, I disagree with you. The we people, the people in, look, look, the, the are, Palestinian in Israel, okay? Did not have a democracy, never, never. One day they woke up and they have the right to vote. My parents came from Iraq, never voted in their lives. One day they had the right to vote. My uh, Russian neighbors never voted in her life. One day they had a right to vote. The same, voted, with, but with, the same with voted. all the people she that voted. came to Israel. She voted, but she voted for the party. No, they did not vote at all. Zero. They did not vote. They did not vote in Russia. They did not vote in Poland. They did not vote in, in um, Czechoslovakia. Joseph, Joseph, they voted, but they voted for the one party. There were elections. But okay. it was elections well, okay, but for, was, the, for the okay, communist but that, party. They, they, what party did they vote for in Iraq in 1940? No, I'm not, I'm not talking about Iraq. I'm talking about the Soviet Union. Okay. What, what they voted for, who did they vote for before World War II? Nobody. Who did they vote for in 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 uh, But Morocco? democracy is not voting only. Okay. Democracy is a whole system of things that is not only about voting. It's okay. about it's like, human it's rights, like, it's, it's, like, about it's like freedom of expression, it's uh, about uh, pluralism, it's about diversity, it's about tolerance, it's, uh, it's about different I things. I agree, just about... I agree. It's like saying health is not about exercise, but you need to exercise and later on you get health. 
you can say it's not coming to you just from nothing. You need to start working. You need to do some physical acts and, the, and voting is a physical act that would improve democracy, that would spread democracy. You just need it. It's a simple act that, that and look, the Palestinians vote in the same in the same amount as the Israelis, the same portion, 60% of the Palestinians vote. 60%. But it is not an issue of voting. The Athenians voted, but they voted to, uh, to consider or to condemn Socrates and eventually led to his uh, death. And so they voted, but they voted of the wrong, for the wrong I agree. I agree. I agree completely. I agree completely. No, it, I'm not saying it's only voting. Voting is just the beginning. But you need to start having a system. You need to start having a system. And what we are doing is we are creating a system for voting. We are creating a system for dialogue. We are creating it's not going to be just three months of voting. It will be a year before where people would would um, would explain their agenda. There will be a huge discussion about it. So what I'm saying is, and I, that brings me to the, we need to have awareness. We need to have awareness and then comes voting and then comes democracy. I, mean, I, I agree with you. It's not only about voting. You know, you need to have that list which you have people voted uh, for, which about education, about tolerance, about teaching people to uh, pluralism and diversity and things. You, you, you start with that because that's the- But you need to have a parliament to do that. You can't just say to the people, vote for education. That's legislation. No, no, no I'm not talking about vote for education. I'm saying educate the people. That's what Plato did. That's what I am saying. Like Plato, no, Plato no, was very dismayed. No what democracy happened. in the world started. They all set up voting. Israel started as voting. America, voting. There is no period of your education because you'll have people's uh, uh, people that are skeptical, but you just say, let's do it. When th there is a saying, if you build it, they will come. They will come. And I then you'll is... have 300 parliament members. Joseph, if you, if you don't have education then and you have voting, you will end up with people like Hitler being elected because I'm sorry, the people that voted for Hitler were educated. The people that voted in Israel and Palestine had much less education. It's not about, people are not stupid. They know who they want to vote for. It's just that you, you need to create a system of transparency. Not only voting, you need to create a system of transparency. You need to you need to have a constitution. That's why we are here to talk about it. A constitution, you need to have transparency. You need to have a discussion and you need to remove religion from the, uh, from the constitution. They cannot vote based on, 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 on uh, religion. And that's what we are working to do. So let me, let me, uh, okay, Charles, and then I'll have the closing remark and then I'll give you, uh, Professor Dajani, the right to have closing remark. Charles, please. Uh, from my perspective, all of these issues are not gonna be resolved until we can look at it through a larger lens. Um, a hurricane doesn't care whether you're an authoritarian or a Democrat or an Israeli or a Palestinian or an American or an Australian. The outback is burning down. Canada is burning. Siberia is burning. California is burning. When 2008, when I went to an interview 
uh, Syrian refugees in um, uh, Jordan, excuse me, Iraqi refugees in Syria and Jordan. They were in the second year of a climate change drought. And it was very clear to me that that government would fall soon because no government can withstand political, the political unrest that's engendered when the people's needs are not being met. Now, any government that thinks that they're immune to this is dreaming. And the longer we spend on these sectarian identities, the more time we are wasting because these squabbles will be our demise as a species. We need to move beyond this. We need to find that bigger stick, which is our common humanity. We don't have to let go of our little sticks, but there's a bigger stick we need to recognize. And that has to be the frame through which these uh, difficulties can be resolved if we can find that. And how to engender it in each other? I mean, education, obviously. I don't know how, how else we can do it, but the point is it's already there. How do, we, how do we come from that place to reach that place in each other so that we automatically move beyond these smaller ways in which we identify ourselves to reclaim our, our greater humanity, our larger identity? We have a limited time to do this. Every one of us is going to be dead one day. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, there, there, is, there, there are things under which we have no control. And the more that we can understand how those forces uh, are real in our lives, the, the better life we'll have. That's all I have to say. All right. Let me just make closing remark, and then I'll give Professor Dejani an opportunity. Um, this reality this this vision of common government is a possibility a very strong possibility the first thing we need is an awareness we need to have the people of israel and palestine and the world aware that there is another option to make peace the israeli and the palestinian governments are unable to make peace they have proven that for 74 years they are unable to make peace they are unable to to create two states or one state. They are, they are, in my opinion, they are the enemies of peace. They are not, they're, they're not able to make peace. If we create a democracy, it, it will be based on equality and it will create peace. It is possible 40% in Estonia vote online. It is possible to create online election, a common election is possible. I wanna remind you that on the average, a daily full-fledged war between Israel and Gaza is $100 million a day. $100 million a day. That's, with $100 million, every assumption that was presented at the beginning of the simulation is very, very realistic. So please help. Um, we are trying to get uh, grassroots, financial support, and awareness. And I'm going to have uh, Professor Dejani make his uh, final comments, and then um, we'll say uh, we'll end this meeting. Go ahead, Professor Dejani, if you have a closing meeting, to, um, uh, closing remarks. Oh, he's gone. Dan, is Professor Dejani gone? Yeah, it looks like he's not in the meeting any longer. All right, no problem. All right, so thank you so much. I hope to see you next time. And um, I enjoyed the meeting. I thought it was very good. Thank you all.